Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is yet another vlog. And as usual with these vlogs, I am going to start with showcasing some new additions to my physical media collection. So let's start out with some Blu-rays, and then I'm going to go from there in random order, because that's just how my stacks are set up here. So... Here we have Drive, uh, the MVD uh, Rewind Collection release uh, with Mark Dacascos and Kadeem Hardison and Brittany Murphy. Now, I've heard a lot of good things about this from friends of mine. I've still have yet to actually sit down and watch this movie. So I'm really glad to have this on Blu-ray so I could check it out sometime. In high definition. And speaking of Mark Dacascos, here's another Mark Dacascos film, Boogie Boy. Uh, more of a drama for Mark. And uh, has a pretty good cast, and I don't know, it looks like it might be kind of interesting. Yeah, Boogie Boy. Then we have another addition to the horror collection, The House on Sorority Row. Uh, this features uh, a lot of... Uh, talented actresses uh including a, a young harley jane kozak from arachnophobia so i had this on dvd before but uh it was a good deal to upgrade this during mbd's recent sale and uh i decided to pick it up plus i'm honestly starting to really uh warm up to mbd yeah, they have their warts, but they seem to be run by pretty nice guys. And uh, I actually like the vintage uh, format of the slip covers. <clears throat> then we have another MBD Rewind Collection horror film, Mortuary. I've always loved this cover art. I always thought it was really cool. And uh, another one that I had on DVD, but I did not have on Blu-ray. So... Mortuary with uh, young Bill Paxton and in, in a small role. Then we have some uh, Scorpion releasing titles because uh, Ronin had a recent sale and so I loaded up again. So we have uh, The Dogs of War with Christopher Walken. We have the Chuck Norris action classic, The Delta Force. We have a film from the 70s called uh, Human Experiments. Honestly, it looks like a potentially interesting thriller. You got Linda Haynes. You also have uh, uh, Jeffrey Lewis, who plays the villain. Um... The whole thing about this woman who winds up getting uh, captured and trapped in some uh, insane asylum and tortured by this madman. Then we have a Dario Argento production, a film by Michelle so Soavi, The Church. Another one that I had on DVD, but I did not have on Blu-ray. And speaking of uh, Michelle Soavi, we have uh, the other film, The Sect. A film that I actually originally did buy from Amazon, the, the Blu-ray. But it wasn't the two disc, and uh, the disc was scratched, so I had to return it. So, all, honestly, it worked out in my favor, because I got the one with the slipcover and the two disc set. Then we have L.A. Bounty with uh, Sybil Danning and Wings Hauser. Got uh, The Heavenly Kid, which has um, Jason Gedrick in it, playing a completely different role than uh, his role in uh, Iron Eagle. But, yeah. And you also have Jane uh, Kaz Kamarik, who... Uh, you might recognize from Malcolm in the Middle in an early role. So the Heavenly Kid. Then we have uh, one of the latest releases from Vestron Video, The Wraith. Got this at Walmart. 
I'm not super big on this film. I like it okay, but it was cheap, and I'm trying to collect these Vestron Collector Series releases, and I, it has some extra features that I think might be kind of interesting. So that's the main reason why I got it. Uh, this is a film to me that is a prime candidate for a remake. It's a fun idea. It's a good concept for a vigilante film, but this film just relied a little bit too much on the same shots, which kind of took away from the action for me. And despite the moments where it does work, it just ultimately is just an okay film. Uh, I will say this, though. The soundtrack is awesome. It's one of my favorite soundtracks from the 80s. Then we have a film called Sundown, The Vampire Retreat. This is the other Vestron Collector Series release. I've actually never seen this film, so this will be interesting. So we've got Sundown. Uh, Vestron, I know that they just announced they're going to do Steel Dawn, which I'm super excited about because I really like that film. And I have the out-of-print like German release, but this is probably going to have a, a at least as good of a transfer and it's going to have some actual features so uh, i'm looking forward to that one then we have uh some more randomness we've got burying the x uh, a film that joe dante directed with anton yelchin um look like it might be fun um then we have jennifer's body uh, I know this is a film that has a lot of uh, mixed feelings about it, but I've been curious about it for a while now, uh, just because of the concept and everything, and it's one of those films that I, I know it's it's got a very uh, mixed reputation, but I wanted to pick up the Blu-ray when it was still like affordable, because it's starting to go up in price a little bit. Then we've got a bunch of Shout Select releases because they had a sale recently, too. So we have Red Dawn with the slipcover. This is not, even though it says on, on the label here, it says the definitive high-definition release of the film. That's a, that's a lie because it's just the same transfer as the old uh, original release by MGM. And the new features, like it's... You've got some interviews with a couple people who worked on the film and, like, one of the actors, but none of the main cast, and it just ports over the main uh, featurettes from the old release. I'm glad to have it, though, because it it's nice to have the slipcover, and it's cool to have for the collection, but... Yeah, it is a little disappointing since it's not really that much of a collector's edition. Uh, that being said... This old transfer, for as old as it is, actually does look really good. So that's Red Dawn. Then we have Cuffs with Christian Slater and uh, Mila, a young Mila jo Jovovich. Only had this on DVD. Decided to pick it up on Blu-ray. Then we have uh, All About the Benjamins with Ice Cube and Mike Epps. Then we have a film called Little Big League. Um, I remember seeing this when I was a kid and not being that big on it. And I also remember revisiting this sometime, uh, a few years ago, but I'm curious to give this a watch again. It was a good enough deal. And the main reason why I got it though, is for the new interviews. Like you actually have an interview with the kid, which I'm really curious to see his thoughts on it. I, and, uh, hopefully this does well enough in terms of sales that, Shout Select will consider doing something like Rookie of the Year. I, I, I would love to get a, a Blu-ray of that film and have an interview with Thomas Ian Nichols. So then you have Paradise Alley with Stallone, keeping up the sports movie uh, theme. And then we have uh, the critically acclaimed drama Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. And then we have a few more things here. We have a film called Spring. I've heard some good things about, but I've never seen. Apparently it's like a love story romance movie mixed with a monster movie. And we have The Legend of Billie Jean 
on Blu-ray. Uh, then we have uh, The Man Who Knew Too Little with Bill Murray. I think this is honestly a pretty underrated Bill Murray film. I have, I enjoy it quite a bit. And then we have JCVD uh, with Van Damme, one of his uh, best films in the past few years. I remember when this came out, it was a big surprise, and it, and it seemed like it would be like something that would re revitalize and rejuvenate his career, and it really didn't do that much, sadly. He pretty much stayed in direct video land. Uh, then we have uh, some 4Ks, and I'll get to those in, in just a bit. So next up are the 4K releases. So let's start out with one of my most anticipated releases of this year, the Arrow video release of Dune. I love this film. It's one of my favorite science fiction movies, one of my favorite films of the 80s. I had been waiting for this to get the proper transfer on Blu-ray. Uh, and it getting a 4K release by Arrow is just just amazing to me. That being said, it's a little bit of a disappointment because it does not include the documentary that Ballyhoo Films did, which was feature length and extensive because they didn't want to wait for them to finish it. But it is included on the... Um, german release and i pre-ordered that so i'm going to get the best of both worlds i'm going to be able to see the documentary and i'm also going to be able to watch the film in sparkling 4k and uh yeah it's a big i'm a big enough fan of the film that i probably will keep both releases even though a lot of the features are pretty much the same and the transfer is the same uh but there's a big glaring difference the uh, German release is going to have the feature length making of documentary. And yeah, this is a film that I own on Laserdisc as well. The Japanese box set with the extended cut. I still have the out of print steelbook DVD, which has the extended cut, which is not included on this. Uh, and, um, I have the making of Dune by Ed Naha, which is a fantastic making of book that I highly recommend if you can find a copy for cheap. And I also have the storybook. So yeah, it's a film that if I could find more merchandise for it, I probably would add it to my collection. I, I really do love it that much. And this is the best the film has ever looked. I was just absolutely gobsmacked flipping through this uh, transfer. So yeah, Dune, Arrow Video... I am 100% going to be revisiting this and reviewing it along with the new Dune when uh, it comes out. So, yeah, it's unfortunate that the bonus disc is kind of just mostly a lot of new stuff. I mean, mostly a lot of old stuff. Sorry, I'm, my brain's just kind of uh, going through the motions, kind of tired, just still adjusting to my work schedule. But um, there's a booklet here with interviews and pictures and stuff. And there's a poster per usual, the use for uh, Arrow. But um, yeah, I'm happy with it, though, because I just I just love this film. And it's it's really awesome to see that it's getting a release like this. Speaking of Arrow, I also pre-ordered their release of Legend, which I'm also anticipating. It comes out later this month. Keeping up with the 4Ks, we've got a box set here. We've got uh, Bad Boys 1 and 2. Now, this is just kind of weird. I don't really care for this setup because it just... It, you can't really put this on your shelf in a way where it actually matches with all the other box sets because everything's like backwards. And it's just... I, it's, it's cool to look at... Like, if you're just, like, setting this up by itself, but, yeah. And each uh, film is in a case like this, too, which is very different than, than the norm with Bad Boys. But, I mean, not necessarily very different than the norm with Bad Boys, but very different, very, very different, very different. <laughs> From the norm when it comes to uh, 
typical uh, boxes for uh, releases. But it's some nice looking transfers. And then speaking of Bad Boys, Steelbook for Bad Boys for Life, the third film. So now I have all three of them in 4K, keeping up the trend, keeping up with the cycle of Steelbooks. Here we have Transformers, the movie, uh, the Steelbook 4K release from Shout Factory. Then we have one more Steelbook, the Blues Brothers. One little rant about the Blues Brothers is that for some reason on home video, especially on DVD and Blu-ray and 4K, the theatrical version of the film does not have the proper sound mix. For some reason, they use the sound mix for the extended version and they just tweak some things so it does not fit with the theatrical version at all. And that's the way that the theatrical cut has been available to fans and to audiences ever since uh, the theatrical cut made its debut on DVD with an anniversary release. And I liked the film, but it's already a long movie. And the extended cut is like almost, I think it's like three hours or something. So it's like, I honestly would like to have the option to see the theatrical version and to hear the sound the way that it was intended to be heard in the theater when it was released in 1980. I'm just saying, I mean, I just think that's just kind of ridiculous that here we are, for, you know, past the 40 year anniversary of the film and you still don't have the actual proper sound mix. The only way to get it is on VHS and like Laserdisc. And maybe like an old ass DVD, but I don't even think that version is the original cut. So here's some more 4K releases. We've got Animal House, another John Belushi classic. We've got uh, V for Vendetta. A film that, <laughs> if you think about it, was really ahead of its time. Uh, and... I would say, really, the source material, the comic, by Alan Moore was ahead of its time. Because there's a lot of instances of uh, this being really close to home nowadays. Then I have a whole stack of Daniel Craig Bond films in 4K. And these are absolutely fucking spectacular in 4K. I mean, if you like these films and you have a 4K setup, these are some of the best 4K releases in terms of picture quality uh, that you you will get. Like it's just, I, I was just amazed. So you've got Casino Royale, uh, you've got Quantum of Solace, you've got, um, I mean, I've got Skyfall. And then we, Spectre, which I remember not being that great, but I'm curious to give it another watch, as well as a Quantum of Solace. One of these days, maybe when uh, the new Bond comes out, maybe I will uh, revisit uh, the Daniel Craig Bond films at, at the very least. Then we have the box set of Apocalypse Now, the final cut, uh, which has like all different cuts of the film on 4k and regular blu-ray it has all the features has the heart of darkness documentary the apocalypse now then we have uh, star trek beyond for the star trek uh, collection speaking of star trek i did pre-order the four film pack with the first four star trek original cast films in 4k uh, and i should actually be getting that in the upcoming days because i pre-ordered it but the thing is yeah i understand what people are upset but i don't understand what people are like review bombing the set on amazon with like one star re reviews 
yeah, it doesn't have all the films in one set, but 4K actually is more expensive in terms of making the discs, in terms of pressing them. And on top of that, it's just one of those things where I can't even think of like a 4K set other than maybe Harry Potter that has that many films uh, that got a release and was affordable. Um, and even then it wasn't like, it was really expensive. Like when it came out, the Harry Potter box set in 4K, it was like, it was over like 120, 130. Some places like $150 or more. So, yeah, it's still pricey at 70 something dollars for the first four films, but it's not as bad <laughs> as like the as the price the sticker shock would be if like all of them were in there. And I get people's arguments and everything, but I I'm such a big fan of them and they've been begging for a new transfer and new releases ever since the Blu-ray releases. So, uh, I I'm okay with it for right now. Um, and it's nothing new for Paramount because they did that with, the uh, the, the Star Trek films to begin with. They originally released a box set that had the original cast films, and then they released a separate box set that had the next generation films. So the only thing that's different here is that they're splitting up the original cast films. Um, maybe they thought that it wouldn't sell as well if it also had part five in it. I don't know. But the thing is, there's only six of them. So it does feel kind of like, why don't you just throw in five and six? Because what are you going to do with the next box set? Is it just going to have five, six, and generations? Because it just seems like something that's just kind of... I, I, it's just... It doesn't really seem like the best way to split things up. Uh, like, it would have made more sense if they were going to do this to make it like the first three... And then you would at least have four, five, and six in the next set if you were going to split things up. But yeah, I, like I said, I understand people's problems with it. But at the end of the day, I'm just glad I'm getting a 4K release of the first four Star Trek films. Because Paramount could have easily been like, nah, we're not going to do that. So I'm glad that they're at least doing that. Seeing of 4K, I uh, got one last release, a Lego Batman movie. Add to the collection. Now we got some DVDs. I'm going to start out with some TV shows. We've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Got this from Walmart. It was cheap. And the thing is, I grew up watching this show like a lot of kids in the 90s. And uh, I've been wanting to at least get the original series to add to my collection so I could have it so I could watch it whenever I want. But I will say there's a bit of a negative here. I do not understand why the transfers are as bad as they are. Like I've seen VHS rips of these episodes that look better in comparison. Like what the hell happened here? But then at the same time I did some research and yeah, it's it's kind of baffling. But there is an explanation for it, and it's one that will honestly piss you off. Definitely pissed me off, that's for sure. When Disney bought Saban, when they bought Power Rangers, because they also own Power Rangers, when they did that, there was a warehouse that Saban had that had all of these props and all of these uh, uh, prints of episodes and tapes and and back backups and everything and disney because they didn't want to pay for the storage space because they're a bunch of cheap skates they decided to just shred everything they went into this massive shredding spree it just destroyed like the majority of everything that was in the warehouse including uh, the original transfers, original uh, tapes. So Disney is the one to blame for why the the show doesn't really look that great uh, on DVD. Uh, there's a lot of moments where the picture quality is just subpar, and um, it's disappointing. And you can blame Disney for that because they were being fucking cheap and being a bunch of assholes. 
So <laughs> when I read that, I was like, oh, of course, of course, it's Disney's fault. So, but yeah, that's the Power Rangers set. I mean, you've got season one, the first season. You've got uh, the second season with the White Ranger. You've got uh, season three, which uh, has a cast change, incorporates, I think, cast members from the movie. And then you've got uh, Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers that is also included. So... I'm not as big of a Power Rangers fan enough to the point where I want all the other seasons. I'm fine with just having the original complete first series run because that's what I remember. Then we have uh, DVDs of season one of Beauty and the Beast with Ron Perlman and Linda Hamilton and season two. I've uh, heard... A decent amount of things about this show some good things but i never really got around to picking these up and surely got these for a good deal i traded in some stuff to a local record shop and was able to pick these up that and they were brand new when i got them so these also do i mean for an old show like the transfer is okay but there are some episodes here where the picture quality is pretty Pretty abysmal, to be honest. Speaking of bad picture quality. So that's unfortunate. But I doubt that series will ever get a remaster or anything. So now we have some more DVDs. We have a TV film called uh, Codename Dancer with Kate Capshaw. Uh, we have a comic book. Well, not really. Well, it's uh, inspired by comics. Uh, Mirage Man. Then we have an action film featuring the same guy from Mirage Man, uh, Mandrill. Got a film for the Nicolas Cage collection, Jiu-Jitsu, which is also directed by the guy who directed Slaughterhouse Rock. Uh, you have The Beach House, a uh, Shudder horror film. Looked potentially intriguing, and it only cost me a dollar, so it's not like I spent that much on it. Uh, got this for like 50 cents, Grandma's Boy. I remember not minding it when I saw it years ago. It's been a while. Got a drama from the 90s called Blue Desert, starring Courtney Cox and D.B. Sweeney. Uh, we have, uh, The Beast. Uh, I had this already in DVD, but the release that I had was in full screen. And uh, there was no widescreen option because, it, folks, there was a time period with DVD where studios would release only full screen versions of films and they wouldn't differentiate uh, which version has full screen and which version has widescreen on the front of the box. So when you would see the film you'd be like oh the beast okay you're just gonna assume you're gonna have a widescreen version but that wasn't always the case because then you would flip it over on the back and it would be only in full screen so there was a lot of moments with dvd where that happened and there were some dvds where it was only in full screen even though the film was shot for widescreen and was released in the theater in widescreen so there are still some films that have been released on dvd only that only have full screen releases uh i think clean and sober is one of them and that's a great drama i don't know why that i, I please warner archive release that on blu-ray already um but yeah the beast it i think it does have a blu-ray but um this does have the widescreen version of the film so there's the beast. Uh, picked this up actually pretty recently. The original release of Bangkok Dangerous. I've never seen the original, and uh, looked like it might be interesting. So I picked it up. Um, then we have a pretty hard to find Anchor Bay release. One down, two to go. Uh, black exploitation film. One of the last black exploitation films, I believe. Because it was released in the 80s. 
Um, I mean, there were still a fair number of those at this point, but this was like like the last hurrah for a lot of these actors in terms of like the a big event film where you've got Jim Brown, you got Fred Williamson, you got Jim Kelly and Richard Roundtree all in one movie. So that's one down, two to go. Then we have Sinjinor. <laughs> this is a film that I remember renting on Netflix back when Netflix was only a DVD rental service. I'm so old that I that's I remember that time period, folks. <laughs> and Sinjinor is one that I remember renting from them and I, I guess it's because I read something about it in a book that I have. I think it was a Creature Features movie guide. And I was like, that looks like it might be kind of fun or di different. Or I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, okay, Sinjinor. But uh, I've, wa I've been wanting to get the DVD for a while just for um, just for nostalgia's sake and just for the collection. So Sinjinor, it's kind of a loose sequel or, or remake of Scared to Death. Then there we have a film called Thirst, which I had on DVD, but I did not have the Synapse Special Edition. And we have a horror film called The Ranger, which looks like it might have some promise in terms of the style. It's got a very punk rock style to it, which I actually think could be fun for a slasher. Uh, you've got Mark. I've got Mark of the Devil here with uh, Herbert Lom and Udo Kier. The Blue Underground release. Got a Japanese horror film called Living Hell. Has some good reviews. Apparently it's... A lot of people are comparing it to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Got a handful of trauma uh, DVDs because they were cheap. And some of them I'm genuinely curious about, like screenplay. Um... Some I just got for shits and giggles just to laugh at, like Pterodactyl Woman from Beverly Hills. <laughs> like, really? Like, what the fuck, Beverly D'Angelo? <laughs> Film called The Ruining was uh, <laughs> Patrick Warburton before he was somewhat famous. Uh, this isn't a trauma film, but it's a low-budget movie called Necroville. It looked like it might be kind of fun, uh, although I, I flipped through it and the acting does seem to be pretty bad. Good thing I didn't pay a ton for it. In fact, I didn't pay anything for it because I pick, I bought uh, the complete series of Monsters at the same store for like 20 bucks, and I sold it on eBay and, and paid for everything uh, with that sale. So there's Pink Eye. I got it because of the, the review on the back, but, you know, it, it, it's another one that looks like it might be pretty shitty. Uh, Funny Man. Uh, I've been curious about this one for a while, and I only got this for, like, five bucks, and this is, like, extremely uh, rare nowadays. Like, it's out of print, and you'd be lucky to get one that's in good shape for ten bucks, let alone five. So, Funny Man. Then we have another out-of-print release that I got for a good deal. Uh, the Mondo Macabro DVD of For Your Height Only and uh, a Bruce Lay movie, Challenge of the Tiger. This one is another rare one, and it was like pretty much unopened and brand new, and it only cost me like 8 bucks. So then we got some more trauma films. We've got Skeleton Coast, uh, which actually isn't a trauma film. It's another movie that trauma never actually made, but they just released on DVD, along with a film like this, Mirror of Death, which I have on VHS, but I did not have the DVD of. Um, and then we'll round it out with uh, Lethal Weapon, the director's cut, because it's only on DVD. Which is bullshit. I don't know why this is not included on the Blu-ray. Blu-rays have a lot of space. You can include multiple different cuts. You don't have to just not have it at all. And then an old platinum release of uh, Dangerous Relations. A film I didn't even know had a DVD release. I just thought it was on VHS. A drama with Lou Gossett Jr., Ray Dong Chong, Blair Underwood. 
So dangerous relations, and then we get to the VHS. I round out this portion of the vlog with the VHS. Um, just to give you a heads up, you might see uh, the second part of this video might have a completely different lighting scheme, a completely different setup, uh, because I will probably be shooting the second half of this vlog uh, at another time. Um, it's one of those things where my schedule is a little tight, so I have to kind of make adjustments here and there. So, but let's get to the VHS. So we start with Prince Valiant's, the 90s uh, adaptation, which is incredibly hard to find, incredibly rare. I know this is a screener copy, but I'm fine with it. You have no idea how long I've been trying to find this damn VHS tape. <laughs> so when I went to a place that I frequent, oh, I don't necessarily frequent, but a place that I like to go to every now and then because he still has a lot of VHS um, and the prices are relatively affordable. And he also has DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff, but I gotta be honest, he probably has more VHS than he has uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. And I could not believe it. I was like, is that really Prince, the 90s Prince Valiant? And it is. Because I remember renting this uh, on, at like a video store when I was a kid. Uh, I have the novelization. And it's not a great film, but I remember it just being one of those fantasy movies that I did have some fun with and it's a movie that's just been completely and totally forgotten about for the most part uh and it doesn't help either that it's impossible to find uh th there's a dvd release overseas but it's out of print um and it's one of those films that it's got a, you know some actors some well-known names like ron perlman you've got katherine heigl before she was famous We've got Stephen Moyer in it. Um, it's based on a comic strip that's pretty well known. Uh, Joanna Lumley from Absolutely Fabulous, the TV show. She's in this as the villain. Uh, but, but it's a movie that's just been totally, completely forgotten about. Probably because nobody can find it. Uh, you, it's not even streaming legally anywhere. Like You can find it illegally streaming, at least at least in the U.S., uh, maybe it's streaming legally overseas. There's a DVD overseas, but the one that has the English uh, dub is really uh, difficult to find. It's like finding a needle on a haystack, and the only other versions are the ones with the dub that's not even in English. So, <laughs> yeah, Prince Valiant. I'm surprised this hasn't been released on on. DVD or Blu-ray in the U.S. Considering it's a comic book strip movie, and and uh, maybe it's a rights thing. It might be a rights thing because Constantine Films produced it. So then we have No Secrets, a film that just looks like it might be kind of an interesting thriller, mainly because of the cast. I mean, you got a young Tracy Lind, who I have a serious crush on, from uh, Fright Night Part Two, and and uh, my boyfriend's back. And uh, you also got Amy Locaine, who's been in a few things. Um, yeah, it looks like it might be an interesting uh, thriller. Uh, got a film called Fire and Ice, which I keep getting confused with another film called, I believe it's called, it's called Fire, Ice, and Dynamite. And I've been trying to find that one. This is a different movie. Uh, but... It's a brand new unopened VHS that I got at Goodwill for like a dollar. So I was like, sure, for the collection. I only got this for because it was a quarter. Because otherwise, I would not have even bothered. A film called The Soft Kill. First off, like, what the fuck is a soft kill? <laughs> I mean, really? But you got Brian James, uh, Corbin Burnson, Matt McCoy... It's the soft kill. Something's going down hard. It's like, oh my god. The soft kill. The fuck? The soft kill. Uh, We have a Christopher Lambert film. uh, To Kill Priest. Which also has Ed Harris. And this is one I think is only on VHS. I don't think this did get a DVD release. Maybe it's because of the subject material. I don't know. Uh... 
New Horizons film called 800 Leagues Down the Amazon with Daphne Zuniga, Barry Bostwick, Adam Baldwin, adventure movie. Um, we also have a film called Erg, A Music War, which is like a lot of really early punk performances from different bands on like the early 80s. And then I also did get another film called Terminal Virus with uh, James Brolin, but I I just it's it's somewhere that I don't really want to get at right now. And then we'll just round this portion up of this video with two more VHS tapes. So we have Super Carrier, which is a film that I think is like the pilot for a show. That, that came out in the, the the 80s, the late 80s. And the big selling point was that it was shot on an actual aircraft carrier. And with the full cooperation of the U.S. Navy. But the show didn't last very long because of the expenses. And also because of the fact that the U.S. Navy was just not allowing them to be that flexible. They weren't allowing them to do the, a lot of th things with the with the show because the Navy would come in and be like, no, you can't do that. You can't do this. So it, it was a show that never really was able to draw anybody in because it just seemed to be kind of boring. Um, but I'm curious about this. I, I've always been kind of curious about this because I think I had a book uh, that, that was an adaptation of, of this uh, pilot and stars Robert Hooks. Uh, you've got Ken Olantz. Uh, you've also got um, Richard Jekyll, um, and you have Wendy Malick. She's also in this uh, this film. And then you have Michael Dudikoff in The Human Shield. Uh, this is actually one of his better films, and it's not on DVD, at least not in the U.S., which is which is which sucks and is unfortunate. I think this is a pretty solid Michael Dudikoff movie. And uh, I had this on VHS before, but the, my VCR ate the tape, so my ta the tape was pretty much useless. So uh, I was really happy to find a, a copy that was in working order. So that's it. That's the uh, vlog uh, part one. I think I'm just going to set it up this way. I'm just going to set it up as like part one and part two because this is such, this is such a long first half of the video like if i got around to talking about trailers and movie news and stuff and upcoming dvd and blu-ray releases like this would be over an hour this might be like a two hour long vlog and i, I don't want to do that so anyway uh thanks for watching uh i hope you all are doing well and uh as always i'll see you later see ya